Hey there, Westminster. I am coming to you back from my office today, uh, and I want to talk about love today in honor of Valentine's Day that was Monday. Um, so the content for this kind of comes from a book from C.S. Lewis, The Four Loves. You can check that out. Uh, it's a great book if you want to go a little bit deeper into the subject for this um, talk. Um, so uh, the idea is that in English, right, we only have one word for love. Um, but we can mean it in all kinds of ways. The Beatles famously sang, right, all you need is love. But the question is, well, what kind of love do you need? In Greek, we have four different words for love that are commonly used. Um, storge love, eros love, phileus love, and agape love. So let me touch uh, briefly on each one of those. Uh, storge love is the kind of love that you have for stuff. It's the, uh, when I think of the, um, when I think of this, I think of the movie Clueless. If you remember, if you're a child in the 90s from me, there's this funny line that the main character says, where she says, I love my Skechers, but I love my Prada backpack. <laughs> you know, I hope you're laughing. You may probably don't know what I'm talking about. But uh, the point is that we have certain things in our lives that we just love. We don't know how we got along without them. They are the best things. We, we yeah, uh, you can maybe name some of those things. You can, uh, this, um, feel free to share them with each other. <laughs> I'd love to actually hear one of the things that you have some store game love about. I just love this thing. Uh, the second kind of love is Eros love. Uh, this one, I don't even know if we need to talk about, but passionate love, romantic love, erotic love. It's the love that you have in the deep inside in your gut, right? The kind of how to make you sick sometimes. The deep love you have for another. It's the kind of love that we celebrate on Valentine's Day and we see in the rom-coms that we would love to watch. Um, in the Greek um, idea, um, Eros love was... Um, often thought of as the most powerful kind of love, but also the most dangerous kind of love. If I were to put it in my own words, I would say it is to be feared, or sorry, it is to be revered, but it is also to be feared. Eros love. It's like a loose cannon, <laughs> almost. Uh, the third kind of love is phileus love. It's often called friendship love, but I would say that it goes maybe even beyond that uh, slightly. Um, thinking about it more as a sense of admiration kind of love. It's phileus love is where we get the word Philadelphia from, the city of brotherly love. Um, but again, it, it's kind of this idea of something that you see in, some th in somebody else that you want to be, or you want to be like that. It's the it's um, maybe that moment that you've had in, that you've seen in a member, a mentor, or a friend, or a spouse. Something that you um, you you deeply just admire. Something that is inspiring to you. Um, maybe it is even just the realization of something is just beautiful or good, and you're like, that I just appreciate that. That is phileus kind of love. Uh, the fourth kind of love uh, is agape love. And this is the kind of love that you've probably heard if you've been around, spend any time around church circles, uh, because it is the word that is most often used in the Greek New Testament. Agape love often is thought of as unconditional love. If I were to put it in my own words, I might say, per, um, you could say it like a perpetual self-giving kind of love. It's a love that's undeserved. It's unmerited. It's the kind of love that we use maybe when we forgive somebody, that we're, that we're giving it, giving our love ahead of time, beforehand, um, perhaps before it is earned. Um, you might even say in that sense of forgiving that it's given even um, or precisely when it isn't earned. Agape love. Uh, you think about famous verses that have um, this word in them. Let us love one another because love comes from God. Love your enemies. Love one another as I have loved you. This is Jesus talking to his disciples toward the end of his ministry. Um, the famous golden rule, love your neighbor as yourself. Which is, on the side note, a really interesting idea, isn't it? That you have to love yourself first. You have to have this agape love, un perpetual self-giving love to yourself before you can maybe even give it to another. And lastly, one more, Jesus says to his disciples, remain in my love, remain in my agape, unconditional love for you, and that will then remain in you. 
this kind of love is clearly, I think, the hardest to learn, but it is also the purest form of love. And I think it's perhaps the single greatest gift that we could ever give to another person. And if we're thinking about us as the church, I think it's the greatest gift the church has to give to the world. Agape love. If we're lucky, this is the kind of love that we learn from our parents. And maybe it's the kind of love that we learn as parents, as we look at our kids. But this kind of love is clearly the goal, right? To learn to love like this. This is the kind of love that God has for humanity as we, as we think about just the breath in our lungs, the world around us. We just see the blessings that God enters into our lives every day. We just think of this has got to be perpetual, self-giving love. It's the kind of love that Jesus has for us. As we think about willing to give up his life to teach us about the depth of God's love for us. And it's the kind of love that Jesus calls us to cultivate in our own lives. That we can, um, yeah, learn to feel it, learn to appreciate it, learn to know that it's given to us, and then that we could then turn around and give it to each other. So there you have it, the four kinds of love, storge and stuff, eros and romantic, Baleus and admiration and agape, perpetual, emptying, self-giving kind of love. Hope, uh, hope it's helpful for you as you think about love in your own life this day. Be good, uh, be well, and do good, and we'll see you around. Take care. <laughs>